This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is the Ramsey Show, as we're taking your questions about your life and your money. Open phones at 888 825 So, George, with a little bit of traveling, um, you've been doing the show more than I have. I know. Dave, I mean, first we beat you with the Fine Print Podcast hitting number one while you were sitting far away number two and uh and then you've been, you've been gone and so i've been hosting with christy with ken and it felt like you know dad's gone we're gonna have some fun and now dad's back and so we're all buttoned up oh so so you guys weren't behaving or anything huh? well you know we're, we're live on national radio so oh. we we have a, a filter still well, but I, we were I, loose. Yeah, you might. Christy doesn't. We all had our hair down uh, on Friday. <laughs> See, we out. can't do that when I'm here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and Christy can do that. That's not funny. We had a great all time. Right. But, hey, it's good to have you back. We missed you. Well, yeah, I it's can tell. It's not the same without you. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that tear in, in your eye. Uh, open phones at 888-825-5225. We'll take your questions. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Again, 888-825-5225. Robert's in New York City. Hey, Robert, what's up? Good afternoon, Dave. How are you guys? Better than I deserve, brother. How can we help? Awesome. So, Dave, um, recently I I have a construction company. My father had passed away. Hmm. Um, We worked together for many years, and we bought some real estate together throughout the years. I'm sorry. Uh, Now I have about three. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I have about three properties right now. Mm-hmm. I think I'm still in baby step two of paying all my debt because I kind of did them all out of order, mm-hmm. according to you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just looking to get some guidance as to where I can kind of pick up the pieces and, uh, and what I should do with this real estate. Yeah. So you inherited all the property? No, we, we bought it together. We, we, were, we were partners on it. I know, but he, when um, he passed, who inherited his half? Oh, my uh, my mother. My oh, okay. Mother. Okay, so mother you're making this decision for both you and your mom. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. All right, cool. Well, I think, um, number one, we're going to put her her needs at the front of the table before your needs. Okay. Okay. Um, but they're probably somewhat equal. I mean, it's probably like, you, you know, if you sell a piece of property, you pay the debt, some debt on some of your debt with your half and she gets some money out of it. That doesn't hurt her, you know, that kind of a thing. But we're not going to do anything to harm her. And I think that's a, that's mm-hmm. a given. I didn't have to tell you that. You already knew that. But we'll just say that as our first leg in the decision making paradigm. Um, and uh, how much debt do you have? Not counting real estate. Oh, maybe ten to twenty thousand dollars, but it's just business debt. It's yeah. like a material we buy every month. Yeah, you have any money? Leave zero dollars. Yes, yes. So you got the money to pay it off? Yes, sir. Okay, so you don't have to sell real estate to pay it off? No, sir. Okay, so what's your plan? What what can we help you with? Um, I was one. I have three properties. Uh, one of them is free and clear. Two of them have a mortgage. So I guess my question would be. According to the Ramsey method, should I sell one in order to pay off the other mortgages and then start again having everything free and clear? Because they are income properties. Yeah. They pay for themselves plus profit. Yeah. And that's where I get a little, you know, cloudy on the on the Ramsey method. Yeah. Well, the, the, the Ramsey method is just simply if you are debt free, you have less risk and you make more money. Mm-hmm. So it's not. There's no secret to the Ram. It's, it's your great grandpa's method too. It used to be called common sense, <laughs> right? And so, if you don't have debt, you make more money, and you don't have as much risk. So let's just go back to that. Now, then, the question is: I love real estate. Obviously, you and your dad loved real estate. Um, Very and much. I, yes. I, um, I don't. There's nothing on fire in what you're describing. So, but I would develop a plan within a short number of years to use cash flow to plow into those two and let us let's get them paid off. And your house, get your home paid off. 
Gotcha. Now, if you want to keep them, if you got one of them you don't really like anyway, and you want to dump it and spread the equity over onto your house, and is your mom got debt on her house? Uh, yes, minimal, but yes, she okay. does. Okay. All right. And what do you owe on your home? Uh, about four hundred thousand. Okay. Well, I mean, I grew up in the construction and real estate business, and so there's only one thing I'm sure of. You can't be sure of anything, right? Yes. And so having a paid-for house, a paid-for business, and paid-for property in the construction business puts you in a different frame of mind when you get up in the morning over a cup of coffee. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yes, sir. 100%. So that's a reasonable goal for you and for your mom. So I might, if I were in your shoes, I might look over and pick out the one I like least and let's liquidate it and uh, you know, reach over and knock off your mortgage, knock off her mortgage, and um, then let's, you know, and if it takes you three years to pay off the other one, cash flow-wise, fine. But don't look, don't just sit there and play with this debt like it's a your pet monkey or something let's get rid of it right yes george you want to yeah. jump in here somewhere yeah, my, yeah i'm feeling that i just when i look at it through the lens of financial peace i go what's going to put mom in the best spot what's going to put me in the best spot and for me that's going i want to clean up my personal debt first including the mortgage if i can do that and then i'll become a real estate investor once i'm in a good spot i've got a good foundation you know you're, you're investing for the future you've got that emergency fund in place and then whatever's left over you can have fun and play with some real estate at that point so but, i like the idea of selling one of those but i've got a feeling if you leaned into this if you sold one of them and kept the other one you could probably probably pay it off in what three to five years i think if i sold one property dave with the values here in new york i could probably pay all debt off on every property okay and that's what i'm kind of that's kind of interesting that's where I mean, that's kind of interesting yeah. well ask yourself where would you rather be in two years two years from now i mean still feeding yep. the monkey or or just be get the monkey off your back i mean you know it's it's up to you i'm not I, I, I think you're making plenty of money, and I think you're going to be okay. I, the big thing I want you to do is have a plan to get rid of the debt, whether it's instantaneously or three to five years, okay? Got it. If you got that, got then you're you're on the Ramsey plan. You're worried about the Ramsey plan. Who gives a crap? But <laughs> but the, then you're on that. Let me tell you one last thing, okay? Uh, because sure. losing your dad that you worked with, and you all built a construction company and a real estate portfolio together, um, you lost your partner. You lost your friend. You lost your dad yeah. all in one fell swoop. And what I have told my son and my daughters is there is nothing that the Ramseys own that you need to keep because of me. <laughs> okay? Because sometimes you go, well, yeah. dad, t dad said never to sell that. I don't want, dad wouldn't want us to sell that. Uh, you know, and I don't want that on you, and I don't want that on my kids. So it's just, what is the best thing for you? What is the best thing for your mom? That's what your dad would want. Yeah. And this stuff can get emotional. Like you're saying, oh, Dave, we took guaranteed. calls last week. And then, yeah. well, Grandma would, would have wanted me to do this. And we've got to make decisions for ourselves. It's written into our estate plan. The operating board is not allowed to keep sacred cows around here after I'm gone. They should be shot and eaten. I'll take a bite of that. <laughs> <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 
888-900-3225. Mike is with us. Mike is in Cincinnati. Hey, Mike, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my question. Sure. What's up? So I recently became self-employed in January of this year, and I was curious as to your advice uh, for self-employed individuals that are having kind of an outlier good year and making more than uh, they would expect to make in a typical year, um, how to divide that up between t- taking money out of the business, leaving money in the business to operate it, uh, et cetera. Okay. What are you doing? Uh, I'm an M&A consultant. Okay. All right. Um, well, I'm guessing you're running an LLC or a sub-S, right? Yes. Okay, so 100% of what you leave in the business is also taxable as income. So you're not going to avoid taxes with any of it. Uh, So the only question is just what kind of liquidity do you want? Um, And so mergers and acquisitions have been a great year, and you don't think that's going to continue? Not at the rate that it's going. Okay, it's been an outlandishly good year then. Good for you. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Well, it doesn't really matter where you leave the liquidity, whether you pile it into a a money market uh, at home or whether you pile it into a mutual fund at home or whether you leave it in the checking account in the business. It's going to be taxable no matter what you do with it. Um, But, yeah, I'm with you. I think we carve off some of it and go, uh, we're not going to go with the mythology of this continuing exactly as is. Um, you know, we're going to say, okay, a normal year looks like X, and anything beyond X, we're going to try to set back. Uh, and, you know, if it sits there a year or so, we may want to start siphoning off some of it into some other things. But uh, if you did something like pay off your house with it, or you did something like pay off your debts with it, then there's no loss there in net worth because you stabilized yourself for another year, the same as the cash would have stabilized you. Okay. I think I'm planning to pay off the rest of our house. We do have about 100000 left in the house, but there would still be some left over. I'm fortunate that it's a low-cost business to just be a consultant, obviously mm-hmm. a services business. Right. Um, so there will be still quite a bit left over, enough to run the business for several years going forward. Um, so I was planning to leave it all in there and not take much off the table aside from that. Yeah, I, 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 would, do a, I would leave some in there. Um, but I'm not going to leave it in there in perpetuation at that level. I mean, six months of operating is plenty inside the business. And that's probably not a lot of money as you're talking, you know, because you don't have a lot of overhead, right? Yes, yes. So I'm carving the rest of that off. I'm going to start investing some of it because you don't want like 200,000 bucks sitting there doing nothing that didn't need to be there from a liquidity standpoint. Now, you do need some liquidity. You need some retained earnings. And we recommend since we run our business debt free, our goal has always been to be at six months of operating. We never get there because we grow so fast. We've we've grown faster than we built our savings. But that liquidity makes it operational. Yeah. And I I mean, on the personal finance side, I like the idea of walking through the baby steps. And if he can pay off the house and still have some there and retained earnings and savings for the business, that's great. That's definitely the the play. That sounds like that's what you're already on. And I would go that direction. James is with us. James is in Orlando. Hi, James. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Awesome. So I am 24. Um, and I've been having some conversations with my employer, and they are about to offer me a pretty substantial um, uh, position in a new market um, in Dallas, Texas. Um, and I'm going to be going from I'm in sales right now. I'm going to be going into a management and sales role in Dallas. And so I'm curious, how do I, when it comes to compensation negotiation. I know that's definitely not everything when it comes to to a job, but how do I go about doing, I guess, my research to make sure that the compensation package that they give me is uh, competitive and, and what it should be for that area? Well, first of all, what does this look like as far as this a done deal? Is this already happening? What's the conversations been like uh, so far with HR? Yeah, it's it's pretty much a, a done deal, and I was told that I should be seeing some type of offer letter by the end of this or next week. Okay. And you don't have any idea what it's going to say? 
I, I, I know the structure of it, but I don't know what the numbers and figures are going to look like yet. No. Well, there's a lot of unknowns here still. I might wait on the offer letter, and then you can have that conversation. And you can do some research, but again, it's going to vary so much, it's hard to put a number on it, especially at 24 years old and you're stepping into this this new role with a player-coach type uh, sales role that you don't have a lot of experience in. I don't know how much negotiating power you have to you know get 30 mm-hmm. or 40% more. Well, what, do you, uh, what, is it you, what kind of business is this? What kind of, you're opening a branch? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a commercial contractor, construction contractor. Okay, you ought to be able to jump online and say, okay, running a branch of X number of, of uh, what, what do you think you'll run through there in terms of business? Ten million, twenty million, two million, what? Mm, first year, if it's just if it's like any other branch we've opened, hopefully between eight to twelve. Okay, I would say you could jump online and say, what's a construction manager of an office making eight, running eight to twelve top line, pay, get paid. You probably can find a comp study somewhere. Shouldn't be that hard. Okay. I mean, I'm guessing Google will probably answer your question. I have no idea, by the way, what that's worth. What do you think it's worth? What do you think they're going to pay you? Oh, man, I, I wish no, I... Oh, come on. I, I mean, you have a guess. What would make you smile real big? Uh, 75 base. And then you're getting spiffs on profits or something? Yeah. Yeah. That's not a bad gig to, at 24. I'm not arguing with that much. I do not know, though. I don't think it's worth 250. So I don't think you're getting, you know, sure. it, it might be worth 85 instead of 75. I don't know. Uh, and depends on what the spiffs are on the upside, too, what percentage of profit kicks you're going to get, that kind of thing. And, you know, so get, guess at what your actual income is going to be. Um, it sounds like a fun adventure all the way around because I haven't heard anything in your conversation or your voice tone or anything that says anything negative about these people. You like them. You trust them. Oh, absolutely. I just want to make sure I I knew how to do my research correctly. It's kind of more what I was getting at. I'm afraid I'm not much help. You know, when the only answer you can get is Google it, you didn't find much help. (laughs) 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 So I don't know. I, uh, you know, the other thing, is there any kind of a, uh, uh, an industry association that you could tap into in the in the commercial construction world that that might have some numbers. Uh, possibly, I haven't. I, I I would consider that as part of my research that I haven't done yet. Yeah, you got any buddies idea. in the business that are working for competitors? Uh, actually, yeah, I do. Now ask them. Say what? What oh. should this be? You don't have to ask them what they're making, but ask them what should this be worth. Sure. And, you know, if they come back and go 100 and a quarter and you get 75, then you probably do have some more research, right? But if they come back going 85, you get 75, then they may not understand your spiff package. And, um, you know, you can get into it that way and have a discussion. But um, you're smart to not go in blind. But but um, I'm sorry. I wish I just knew the perfect website. Col- Coleman might. He's not here today. But um, and you can get on LinkedIn and try to find people in the similar go. industries in your area and get in touch with them. They might be able to meet with you or just do it over messages. That's so much better than Google. Thank you. That's it's, a it's better, an option. Better answer. But if your only answer is Google, it means you don't know anything. <laughs> That's what it means. Google that's, knows that's, all. When I say go to Google, that means I know nothing. That's yeah. what it means. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I can't, you know, if you you could have done that without calling me, you know. <laughs> We're better than Google, hopefully. Mm-hmm. On some things, obviously not on that. So there you go. It's okay. We've still got listeners. It's that's all right. right. Two of them. All two okay. of them. Yeah, both of them. But he's going to be all right. He's a sharp kid, 24 years old, and already getting to leadership roles. That's awesome. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. 
In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Brian and Amy are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Good how are you? How are you doing, Dave? Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Where do you live? We're from North Carolina, Greensboro. Oh. Okay, cool. Welcome to Nashville. And all the way over here to do a debt-free scream, how much have you paid off? We have paid off $295,578. Awesome. And how long did that take? Five years, one month, and one day. All Who's right. counting? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And uh, what was your range of income during that five years? We started off making... 76000 and ended with 138000 Nice. What do you guys do for a living? I am a firefighter and a part-time producer at a small TV station. Cool. And I'm a physical therapist. All right, PT. Yes. So I'm guessing five years. Did you pay off your house? No. <laughs> this was PT bills. Yes, it was. This was, was college bills for both of you, huh? A large amount of it, yes. yes. Yeah. How much yes. How much student loan debt out of the 296000 It was 278000 Oh, almost 600. all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then we got 17 of it forgiven, too. So. Okay. How was that forgiven? Through the teacher loan forgiveness, because I work for the public school system. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. That's good. So that was the quick one, the short-term one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. That's, the one, that's one of the ones that works, not the 10-year plan. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good for you guys. So tell us what happened. Five years ago, you said, that's a lot of student loan debt. What are we going to do? Yes. <laughs> I graduated from school in the end of 2014, and then we got married in 2015 and so then in the beginning of 2016 I was like we have to figure something out and make this work for us and so we knew about your program through our friends and so we decided to do the home study and followed the plan and started from there. Wow. So uh, Brian a firefighter looks up and sees a fire this size. <laughs> Everything's on fire. <laughs> yes. We we call it a uh, big fire, big water. <laughs> it, it becomes a uh, surround and drown operation at that point. And uh, when you when you have a big fire, you need a lot of people, a lot of personnel, a lot of intensity. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the same. That's a good metaphor for this situation. <laughs> yeah, you guys had to lean in, and you had to stay on it a while. I mean, five years is no, this isn't a five month story. This is a five years. I mean, in a culture where the average American can't keep a thought in their head for eight seconds, you stuck with it for five years. I'm so impressed. You guys are heroes. Yeah. How did you, how did you stay focused? Because a lot of people, they go, well, I got this much student loan debt, almost 300000 I'm just going to pay it off till I die. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. So what made you guys go, we're not dying with this thing and we're not going to live with it for more than five years? And we've heard that a lot too, um, that people are just saying, well, why don't you just wait? for the forgiveness and we were actually in the forgiveness program for that 10-year forgiveness mm -hmm. but my thought process our thought process was that I'm not waiting for the government to you know there's a lot that can change in 10 years mm -hmm. and so I just I wasn't reliant upon that and most of it's not good <laughs> 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 during that 10 years uh, I love that mentality it's deteriorating though. up there at a rapid rate I'm just saying oh yes. my gosh so you guys drew a line in the sand where you said alright we're going to have to make some changes what kind of sacrifices did you have to make over those 5 years to stay focused and get this thing knocked out it took a lot of uh, eating at home. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, my wife became a wonderful cook. <laughs> became, <the> became. Became. <laughs> I felt that. There was an evolution there. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lot of stofers early on, and then it yes. evolved into some very, very good cooking. A um, lot of leftovers. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy, you know, during those five years you talked about, it's easy to get caught up. There's, there's those bad days. You know, when you, you get caught up and it's it's just hard mm -hmm. and you, you really don't want to. There was a lot of days when I came home and I said, I don't I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it was it was hard to keep going. And luckily, we <laughs> stuck together as a team. I think that's a lot of what it takes is mm -hmm. sticking together, having that teamwork, sticking to the budget and those habits. Your habits are going to propel you throughout this whole process. And I think that's what's going to propel us. This is just the start. You know, from from here on, everybody thinks that this is the finish. This is just the start, and the habits and the rituals that we have created are going to propel us through the rest of our lives. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I mean, you have out of out of six years of marriage, you have five years and one month of this rhythm, yes. and so you don't know how to do it any other way, really. Correct. <laughs> and this, so this is going to be. I mean, just actually going out to eat is going to like shock your system. <laughs> You know, yes. so uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. What yeah. do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? 
teamwork, uh, grit, sacrifice, leftovers. <laughs> and trusting in each other, too. I mean, mm. it's a team. It took a team to get through it, and I couldn't do it without him. Yeah, yeah. and so. without you. Yeah. There, there was a lot of phone calls about everything. It was, it was a budget meeting probably at least, what, every couple of days. There was a, <laughs> yeah. a phone call about something because something always comes up. Something always comes up, I think. And just being prepared. I mean, your plans set us up because there were unexpected things that did happen in those five years, and it just helped us. We had to pause and move on, and it just... It worked out well. I mean, we're here today, so. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done. Very cool. I'm telling you, the, uh, this, uh, the average American has a different thought every eight seconds. Wow. And they stuck with it five years. They're far away from average yeah. now. <laughs> Way That's, far away. I mean, you guys are just so resilient. I'm just so impressed yeah. with the level of teamwork you guys had from the get-go and how you guys knocked this out. I mean, this is a giant mountain. Most people couldn't even fathom paying this thing off in their lifetime, and you guys decided we're going to do this while we're still young, and we have life to live, and we have goals to achieve, and now you've got $138,000, and every cent of it stays with you. Yes. Other than the uh, two of you, who are your biggest cheerleaders? Our friends, uh, Shannon and Brad. Oh, they came uh, with you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She's right. actually the one that introduced us to the program, Shannon. Okay. <laughs> um, family back home, um, a whole county full of firefighters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, well, I mean, five years, you got to talk about it. I mean, you got to, people have to know. They either think you're crazy or they're cheering for you. Mm -hmm. There's really no in between because you're going for it. It's game on. And uh, so, Financial Peace University Home Study. Today it would be through Ramsey Plus if you did the same thing, and uh, and, and here you are five years later, two hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars paid off. I'm so impressed. We've got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. That is definitely the next chapter in your story. That rhythm is going to carry you out to where you completely change your whole legacy. Very, very, very well done. And, of course, uh, a copy of the Total Money Makeover. You can give that to somebody, get them started on their journey. So you can pay it forward there a little bit. So thanks, you guys. We're so proud of you guys. Thank well you. Done. Thank very you. Very well done. All right. It's Brian and Amy from North Carolina. $296,000 paid off in five years, one month, and one day. $76,000. To $138,000 household income range. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three two, one. one. We're, We're debt free. free. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Love it. Game on, baby. Game on. I love it. So good. You know, I, I, it's impressive when people pay off their debt in five months or in eight months or whatever. And I, I'm happy for anybody that gets out of debt. But there's something special when somebody sticks with something five years. Yeah. Most wow. of you don't even know what you had to eat last night. They stuck with it. That's a marathon. Five years. That's not a 5K. They they really went for it. And what I see is a couple who grew closer together. And I love seeing that thread through every debt-free scream. When you see a couple who got on the same page, it didn't just change their finances. It changed their marriage. And she became a good cook. <laughs> became. A lot of change. Was that a great line? So much change. That's a great that line. That was the kindest way. That was uh, a great he line. That was, he was very he, careful. He was not in trouble. It was factual. Can you get well away done. with that, Dave? You said Sharon became a good cook. Uh, Sharon just already was a good cook. There That's, it is. Uh, I didn't, it, that would not be there accurate in my case. She always had Oh, uh, yeah. She can. Yeah, and, and I have my body has always shown the effects. <laughs> oh, oh, living my good goodness. and eating good. There it is. Life is good. Big old smile. You gotta love it. This is the Ramsey Show.
George Camel, Ramsey personality, my co-host today. I'm Dave Ramsey. Open phones at 888-825-5225 here on The Ramsey Show. Frank is in Venice, Florida. Hi, Frank. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Yes, sir. You always put a big old smile on my face, Mr. Ramsey. Well, thank you, sir. How can we help? I've got a mobile home to a pickle. Um, my girlfriend was paralyzed, and I brought, brought her into my house and had to gut the house and buy no doors and put a mother-in-law suite on the side for somebody to take care of her and all this and put $100,000 more in the house. And now uh, she got her money and went on, which is fine. And I, I'm stuck with a house that's uh, priced at 100 and tops is 190 in the neighborhood. And I was trying to ask 80, 289, and I'm not getting any bites. And I don't know, uh, should I keep it and try to rent it? But but the rent thing, I, I won't rent it. So it's been empty for like two years. And I just, I'm kind of in the, in the price of housing. Once the, it goes down, it's going to, mobile homes get hit and you have to pay cash for it. So the, uh, this whole so, thing, um, this the the addition, all of it's mobile home. Pardon me. The the whole deal is a mobile home. I thought you said you did like an addition. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. It, what you do? Attach a different yeah. mobile home to it? I don't understand. No, no, no. It's the I bought it that way. The uh, carport area it has a huge long carport, and they took that side of it and put a um, another uh, mother-in-law suite on the side. With, and and know. so the whole structure is mobile home. You have to walk down two stairs, and then you're down in the other part of the. It's like the ground floor and the garage level for the other part of it. A basement, sort to of speak. It's the garage. I mean, there's there's a garage on the other side of the door where okay. you can put your car in or your motorcycle. So okay, but I mean, this there, there's not any portion of this home of this property that is traditionally stick built it's all uh no manufactured housing correct okay that's what i'm trying to get my head around what i'm i can't see it in my head so i'm trying to make sure i understand okay and and so you think that the actual market value on it regardless of what you paid for it if you put on the market and said i'm going to sell this to a real person for real money the the real market value is what i had a uh Lady come out and she said it was anywhere in the neighborhood. She priced it out for anywhere from 120 to 190. Okay. And uh, it's all wheelchair accessible. It has a deck, dock on the water, double lot, three huge sheds, concrete all the way around the house. Everything's macked out. Yeah, all the furniture goes with it. It's ready to go. What kind Turn of water key, is it on? Intercoastal or what? Uh, fresh water goes out to two lakes. Okay. All right. Just access. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and and is, is there, you said it was a neighborhood or an area that is worth how in the hundred thousand dollar range though? Well, the, 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 the the realtor said it goes anywhere from 120 to 190 in that neighborhood. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, 120 to 190. Why, why didn't she say 50 to a million? Uh, My God. I mean, I know, I know that's that's what I, 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 I so I think you need a different, uh, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Click on ELP at Ramsey solutions and get one of our endorsed local providers out there to look at this thing. Um, it sounds to me like, it sounds to me like what you said is true. Um, that you have, you spent a lot of money to build a situation oh out God. to build a situation I, out that I, you're I not going to recoup. Right, I, I'm like she had nowhere to go, so I got in my house and yeah, I know. paid people, tradesmen to come I know. in. I know, but you're you, so now I'm, you. I'm not saying you had bad motivation and that you're not noble. You are noble, and you had a wonderful motivation. But the end of the story today is. Or the end of the, the next chapter is today. I'm sitting here person? with a piece of property that, regardless of how we got here, that we have way too much right. invested in based on what it's really worth. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what and I'm how thinking. How do I fi- sell to a handicapped person, and then they would love the house? They just have to find the right person. Yeah, you got to you got to put it on the market, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a handicap. It just has some have to have somebody that just really doesn't want two levels. It could be just somebody doesn't want to climb stairs anymore. Right. And they like the water and they like the big garage and the carport and all that. That's all cool, you know? Uh, And so I I don't care why they like it. I just want them to like it and give you money for it. Right. And you're going to lose money when you do this because you have more than 120 in it, don't you? Oh, my God. I got over 300 in it. Yeah. So that part's just screwed. You understand that? 
Yeah, that's why I was asking 289, and I've had 25 people yeah. say it's a beautiful. Come to the house, say it's a beautiful house, but it's it's, not, it's priced out of the neighborhood. We only want to spend 200. I'm like, uh, but well, you'll never find one like this. Yeah, we know, but yeah, but you're priced 200. out of the neighborhood. See what what you right. what you paid for it doesn't matter. What you'd like to get for it doesn't matter. What some exactly. will, what someone will actually pay you for it is all that matters. That's called market value. Right, that's what they're saying. That, and this you know, is this is the part value. of the story where you admit that what you did, even though it was of good intention and a intention. very noble call, cost you two hundred grand. What was I supposed to do? You know? Yeah, that's, I, do I'm not. Thing. I didn't. I didn't say you did anything wrong. But you wrote a check to be noble <laughs> for two hundred grand. That's the net effect of this. And, and the sooner you get past the idea that somehow you're going to get more money for this because you were a great guy taking care of her, I'm sorry, it doesn't enter into the equation of market value. It, there's no part of the real estate valuation that says great guy. Yeah. And I don't know how much equity you know Frank's got in this thing, or what he could sell it for, what he get out of it, where he's going to go next. Those are some pieces of the equation he's got to figure out. But the key here is, and you talk about this in Financial Peace University, and the real estate lesson is not overbuilding in the neighborhood, and it's for exactly this reason, because you, you're underwater on it like you would be with a car. And so, Frank, uh, I think you've got some hard decisions to make, but I think this is a stupid tax. Yeah, you've already lost the money. The only question is, are you going to admit it? That the money's gone. You're not going to get it back out of this property. And, and, and when you sell it and you get a check for $125,000, that's when you will admit it. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Again, I'm not picking on you for your motives or anything else. Uh, you know, looking back on it, you probably would have done it a different way if I were to ask you that. But completely understand. Well, it's the last day of August, George, and that means that it is the last day of our $10 book sale. You can get almost all of our books on sale right now for $10 each, including the Total Money Makeover, which is approaching $10 million in sales. Uh, so we've sold a couple of those. Uh, so $10 is a bargain on all of our bestsellers. All the Ramsey Personalities books are on there. Uh, I mean, just about every single book is on there for $10. And uh, our most popular starter envelope system is on sale for ten dollars and the ramsey cash giveaway ends today enter for a chance to win three thousand dollars as a grand prize you got to be 18 or older no purchases necessary text cash to 33 789 if you want to get on that ten dollar sale then what you'll do of course is go to ramseysolutions.com and click on the uh, store there and get lined up on the bargains so george let's just recoup them a second two things and you always want to learn from these callers uh if you're out there number one number two um there's some principles involved okay number one is uh, when you're in a desperate situation you seldom make good decisions there would have been a whole lot of ways to care for that lady his girlfriend that didn't involve losing two hundred thousand dollars uh, and, but if you get emotional, desperate uh, about how you're going to take care of her, and he has a big old heart. That guy's got yeah. a wonderful heart. Um, but you get emotional. That's when I have done some of the dumbest things I've ever done with money is my brain shut down. And I, as you said, I pay stupid tax because I get stupid. So th that's thing one. Thing two is overbuilding the neighborhood. So if you're putting something on your house that the only way it makes sense is you have to be the most expensive house plus some in the neighborhood to get your money back out, dumb addition. Don't do that. Number three is mobile homes go down in value. 100% of them. Yeah. You put those three things together, you got poor Frank's mess. Mm -hmm. And real estate's got zeros on the end, so it hurts even more. Yeah, it, it, these are not small mistakes. No. It's not a $2,000 problem. It's a $200,000 Big old mess. Ouch! Sorry, Frank. This is the Ramsey Show. Dave here. We just launched a brand new listener survey. We want to know what you think about the show. You'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. No purchase necessary. Take the survey at RamseySolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789. This is the Ramsey.
Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Deanna's in Austin, Texas. Hi, Deanna. How are you? I am well, sir. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> well, uh, we have an 18-year-old granddaughter that was in a car accident many years ago, and she has started receiving quarterly checks from the insurance company when she turned 18. And she will receive those until she's 21. And she has come to us asking us questions about what we think she should do, if anything, with that money other than just putting it in her bank account. I love this kid. Um, she comes to us because we are debt free, um, and uh, therefore we're able to, I think, give her probably a little bit better, hopefully a little bit better advice. But since I really don't have an answer to this, I'm coming to you. So, Absolutely. Well, yeah, she's got a good yeah. head on her shoulders because she's actually asking for advice, which is rare from an 18 year old. So I'm yeah. impressed. Yeah. Is she okay she health a- health wise? Yes, she is. Okay, that's good news. So, how much is this quarterly check that comes in? It is thirty seven hundred dollars. Okay, and then so she will end up she will end up around thirty two thousand somewhere around there by the time she turns twenty one. Okay, that's great. And do you know her, her plans as far as kind of next steps for her in life? Is she planning on going to school? Is she joining the workforce? Yes, she is. Uh, she actually has a a, a little job. And uh, but she will be transitioning out of that. She's going to cosmetology school, um, which her grandfather and I uh, will be helping to pay for. So her question is, uh, really, does she spend part of her money because we're paying for half of her cosmetology school, uh, which is the total is about sixteen thousand. So we're going to pay for half. And her question is, is should she pay for the other half with that money or should she go ahead and um, at work as much as she can, I guess, in the hopes of trying to pay for it, which I don't, I don't think she can because since school is Monday through Friday, eight to five, uh, or should she try to borrow that money, um, to complete the other half? Well, I'll tell you one option that is off the table, and that is borrowing money. Uh, the first That's two, like the first two are fine. I mean, I like her continuing to work, and if she can't cash flow it, I mean, these quarterly checks are going to do it for her. And so I, th- I see no problem with her using that to cash flow cosmetology school, get on her feet. I assume after that, she's going to live on her own after cosmetology school. Is she at home right now? She is at home. She lives with her mom, but and our hope is that she will move out onto her own at that point at, that she completes school. Once she's once she's out of school and has a job in cosmetology. Yes. Okay. Well, she's. I, what I would do is cash flow this thing. And there's really three things you can do with money. You can spend it, you can save it, and you can give it. And so uh, I love her really learning how to be generous at a young age. And I love her having some fun uh, because she's 18 and she needs to have a life and go out with friends and do all the things 18-year-olds should do. And she should absolutely save a bunch in a, an emergency fund. And she can start investing as soon as she's in the workforce, which is not going to be a long ways away from now. Does she have any debt? She has no debt. Okay. Yeah, I agree with George. Let's just let her pay for her half through work and some of this money. The rest of the money is left for her to kick off her life with, and that might include buying a home later. It certainly will include having her emergency fund out there. And the the whole plan is that the way people get into debt is they just don't think about other ways to do it. And so they just go sign up. Yes. And so when she get, has she got a car? Uh, she does not have a car as of yet, but that's also something that her grandfather and I have told we told her we would help with. So part of this part of this money will most likely go toward toward helping her purchase a car at right. some point. Cash on the car, cash on the cash cosmopolitan on the cosmetology school. Graduates with still cash in the bank, and uh, starts her life debt free with a decent car and a you know a license to to 
practice cosmetology. And here we go. Game on, right? Game on. That all sounds very exciting to me. I like it. Do it. Execute. George has given good advice. Uh, James is with us in Phoenix. Hey, James, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Truly an honor to speak with you. You too. What's up? Well, my wife and I are 60 now, and so we've really, you've been an inspiration to us in so many ways. And so we had two cars that we got paid off, so we had no car payments. Um, we just refinanced our house, and we dropped it two whole points down to 1.875. Great. On a 30-year note, I did that on purpose so that if something happened, because we are older, that I'd have a cushion. So that's really helped us. But our question is, is, you know, the housing market has just exploded out here anyway in Phoenix. And so we now find ourselves with about $230,000 in equity. So we're wondering, you know, like, I would love to get my hands on that equity because it's not my money till it's till it's my money. So if the market were to crash, then I'd be back to wherever we were. So our question is, is how, in your opinion, how do we draw out that equity and not put ourselves in way more debt again, you know, because we're in a really good spot, no credit card debt. So really it's just a house and we pay 200 extra every week on the principal. Well, you, you don't draw out equity. You get equity when you sell the house or you have equity in the house and you live there, but there's no, there's no way you get money. There's no way you get money out of the house without borrowing. I mean, you could go refinance your mortgage and run the mortgage all the way up, but I'm not going to tell you to do that. You knew that. Yeah. We're just, we're just really concerned, concerned for our twilight years. And, you know, that's about the only thing that we have that we can look forward to. I have a small 401k, um, nothing really to brag about. Um, got, you know, about 25000 as a reserve emergency fund mm-hmm. in cash. That's good. But other than that, we don't have any. You got your first three really baby steps done. Are y'all still working? Oh, yeah. I don't think I'll ever retire. Okay. Then just let's, you're on baby step four. Let's start chunking money on that, uh, into that retirement. 15% of your income going into there. You do that for five or 10 years. You're 60. That puts you at 65 or 70. You're going to have increased your 401k substantially by then and your Roth IRAs. Now, where, where do you think that the best benefit would be? Should we stop paying the 200 extra in weekly in principal payments to the house and put it towards retirement or continue to pay the house down? And use that as our dude. You our got five run. to seven. You got five to ten years to get the house paid off and build a nest egg. Yeah, because I've always had the house paid off in ten years. Yeah. So, so ba- baby steps. Baby step four is fifteen percent of your income going into retirement. Five kids college. That's not in play. Six is pay off the house early. And if you want a good yeah. solid retirement, you have a paid for house and a nest egg, and you got ten years to do that. So you need to aim at that. And it's not going to be $200 a month extra. It's going to be more than that. It's going to be 15%. You're going to be putting at least 15% of your income into retirement and chunking money big time on that mortgage. Get that stinking mortgage paid off, man. And then build your nest egg up even bigger. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings.
headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios. It's the Ramsey Show. George Campbell is our co-host today, Ramsey personality, and Nathan is with us in San Antonio. Hi, Nathan. How are you? Hi, Dave and George. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, so, basically, I'm, I'm 23. I've been living at home with my parents for the last six or seven months uh, since I graduated college. Um, and I've basically just been saving money because I know I knew ahead of time that my job was going to have me relocate. Um, and I am relocating in the next week, and I've been planning for that. And I have um, a beefier emergency fund than $1,000. Um, not that much. It's only about $10,000. But um, I'm basically was planning on using that to move with. Um, and the one thing my parents were helping me out with was my car insurance. And um, just yesterday, they kind of uh, dropped it on me that they want me to take over that well before expected. Um, I was planning to pick that up a bit down the road after this policy like expires and we have to renew it. Um, but I've budgeted out my expenses with my income and uh, like I could easily do it. It's just a matter of, um, I feel like they're kind of like dropping this on me at the last minute. And it's not something that I've really factored into what I'm going to be doing over the next few months. And it's just so short notice that I, I don't know if I should just do it um, to make them happy because um, they kind of gave me an ultimatum about it, that if I don't do it, then they're not going to, they'll drop me from the insurance or I'll, I'll have to leave the truck uh, here at my house, which is not really feasible. Um, so I just kind of wanted to do y'all's advice on that. So what is, what's the insurance cost? Is this like a large expense? I mean, it's, it's going to be like 250 to 300 a month. Um, but basically, you know, I've already done my uh, zero base budget on every dollar and it's just not something that I factored in. And I could easily just pay like the, the full six months sum um, up front um, and take the hit on my, um, as like a moving expense, I guess. Um, but yeah, it just caused like unnecessary friction at the last minute. And how much is your truck like worth? My truck is worth about, uh, I would say, a little less than fifteen thousand. What do you um, owe on it? It's a, I owe thirty five hundred. Okay, and what is the, uh, and you have ten thousand dollars in savings, and and how much are you making at the new job? I'm making it right now. Um, no, at the new job when you move. Right. Well, I'm, I'm kind of working the new job right now. It's just been work from home, but now that I'm relocating, it's actually going to be the same pay, but I'm getting a raise in April. Right now it's 35 and in April it'll be 45. That's good. Okay. Nice raise. All right. Um, it sounds like this is more relational. I feel your frustration towards your parents more than it is the actual amount of the insurance. Yeah, that's definitely, that definitely played a role. Um, we talked about it yesterday and, uh, it just, they, they just see like how much kind of like stress it's all causing me this move. Um, it is like from where I am now to Florida, which is like halfway across the country. And, um, I don't know. I'm, I really don't know what it is. I think they feel like I'm somehow a big liability because of the far drive that I'm taking. Um, and they just kind of like hit me with this when we've been talking for a while. That No, I think they, know, I think they finally got you off the payroll and they looked up and went, Hey, we can get rid of the insurance too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think yeah. they look at you as a liability. And I don't think they're trying to crash your little boat. I think you're going to be fine. Uh, they just, they just want to cut the apron strings. That's all they're doing. Uh, and I agree. I agree. They're a little bit uh, rough about it because they could have given you more of an emotional on ramp or a mathematical on ramp to try to uh, to catch up. I'm not disagreeing with you on on that idea, Nathan. But um, so here's what I would do. I would go to RamseySolutions.com and click on ELP for insurance. Have one of our ELPs shop your car insurance and get the best possible deal. I think you might be overpaying at $3,000 a year, even at 23 for a $15,000 truck. That seems a little rich to me. I might be wrong, but let them shop it for me, okay? Then when they shop it, okay. you can put car insurance on a monthly, as you know, and if it's 250 a month, put it on the 250 a month. 
and just tighten your little every dollar budget up and make it work. And if you got to work an extra job a little bit, you got to work an extra job a little bit. It's just a little. It, it, it's not a uh, a devastating blow, but it's heavy enough weight that they dropped on you suddenly that it knocked you back on your heels a little bit. George is right. This is more emotional than it is mathematical, but it's heavy enough that you felt it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, but you so can, you can do it and you're going to be glad you did it. And I don't think they're out to get you. I don't think there's any malice in this at all. I think they just didn't do a good job of cutting the apron strings. They used a machete instead of a scalpel. Right. Right. Yeah, you're, blood, you're, a blood instrument, you know, it's like, they just didn't, <laughs> they just didn't give you good, you know, they should have said this six months ago, dude, you're moving out and you're taking all of your crap with you, which includes the insurance and the soccer trophies. Okay. You're, you're out of here. We want the bedroom. I'm putting a pool table in there. I mean, they need to tell you what's up. Right. And so, um, yeah. you're making the car, you're making the truck payments, right. On your own. Or are they doing that? Well, they did for a while. And then after, um, I would say a, a couple of years ago, basically, I'm just paying them and they're, they're kind of like paying for me. Um, and I have like 3,500 left. Yeah. So when you get moved and get settled, if you've got 3,500 left, pay the truck off that day. Yeah, that's what I'm looking to do. And yeah. they kind of know that I've been um, binge watching your show and then I'm like kind of laid out my desk snowball. I do have some student loans. Yeah. Um, so this is a $3,000 offset. So you can use the truck and deliver Uber at night or pizzas at night, or you can pick up a job cutting grass on the weekends and you'll have an extra 6,000 bucks in no time and it'll offset anything. And then by the time April comes around, you're going to be okay. You're going to be in great shape. You're going to get the $10,000 raise. Everything's rocking on. You're going to be just fine. It's just, it just, it just was heavy enough and it was sudden enough that it caught you. And so it's, 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 um, you know, 20% math problem, 80% relational, emotional problem. Yeah. Right? And part of it is adulting. Adulting just sucks. And when you're leaving your early twenties and you start going, Oh crap, I have to pay for insurance. No one told me how expensive this was. Yeah. You start to just kind of feel like you got punched in the face a little bit. Uh, so I think once you get on your feet and you get out on your own, you've got a good income, you clean up the debt, yeah. those payments are gone. You're going to have that income back in your life and you're going to go, okay, I can breathe a little bit. Amy is on the line. She's in Atlanta. Hi, Amy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Mr. Dave. How are you? Good. What's up? Hey, Dave. My son is 22, and he had, he bought some land um, before the market went up, and now he's selling some land, and he's going to end up with about $25,000. Um, where, where should I help him to put that money? We talked about what they call the um, light kind account, where he just holds it to move it into a, another real estate in case he buys some more real estate. But I don't think right now he's going to do that because the real estate's so high right now. Yeah, he's, if he does a 1031 tax deferred exchange, which is what you're referring to, he has six months to select the real estate. So if he's not going to buy a piece okay. of real estate in six months, he's just going to cash this out and pay. It's gonna The capital gains on it's only going to be like three grand. Okay. If he makes twenty thousand dollars, he made twenty thousand dollars profit. Yes. Does he own no, it a no, year? No, he made, no, no, no. He made ten thousand dollars profit. Oh, he, ten he profit. Okay. No. Has he owned it yes. a year? Um. Yes. Okay. Then it's fifteen hundred bucks. It's fifteen percent on your profit. Okay. Yeah. So just pay the okay. t- pay the tax. Don't worry about it, and do something smart with that profit. Um. Uh, he should. He's 22. He's buy, out there buying land. He's already got this stuff on the run. Yeah, and as long as he's debt-free, I don't know his financial situation, but I want to make sure that he's following the baby steps and that he's doing things that are right for his financial future, not getting into investing too early in the real estate business. Yep, that's it. That's how it works. Parents, uh, when you're going to cut them loose, and you should, uh, gradual is good sudden is hard for them it's easy for you but it's hard for them this is the ramsey show
In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, on the debt free stage, Jared and Gabby are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Good, Good Dave. how are you? How are you? Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Omaha, Nebraska. Bit of a haul to Nashville. Yep. Oh my goodness. Well, welcome. Good to have you. And Thank all the you. way here to do a debt free scream. How much have you paid off? Uh, we paid off 94000 in 28 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? It was uh, 110000 to 138. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? Uh, I'm a carpenter for a commercial construction company. Mm-hmm. And I'm a technical recruiter. Ah, very good. Very good. Cool. Well, goodness gracious, 94,000 in 28 months. How long have you two been married? We've been married for a little over two years, high school sweethearts, so we've been together for over 10 years. Okay, cool. So even before marriage, you guys started looking at this going, we got to clean this up, and then first order of business in marriage is finish up the debt snowball. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So tell us the story. How did this all happen? Yeah, so we were taking our pre-marriage counseling um, at our church, and we were getting involved in a couple of different you know, life groups, and our pastor recommended Financial Peace University. Um, we like knew the name, but didn't really have anybody close to us that was following. So we were like, let's go ahead first. We had a, another couple that was getting married at the same time as us um, go in with us. So mm-hmm. we dove right in. There we go. Just like that. Yep. So you kind of wander in not knowing what to expect. Yeah. Like, so after the first lesson, what was happening? People were cutting out credit cards. We were like, okay, what are we doing? So What have we gotten into? Are they going to are they going to hand out snakes? What's yeah. up here? Yeah. Is it a cult? What are we doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so after the second lesson, what were you doing? Cutting them up. You too. You too. <laughs> on board. Just like that. We were on yep. board. Yep. Assimilate to the cult. It's easier that way. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Careful, George. Okay. Come on. All right. I'll go easy, George. <laughs> what kind of debt was this? Uh, it was uh, car loans, student loans, and credit cards. How old are you two? I'm 27. 27. All right. Wow. So you're just kind of normal. We're Nor- normal. Normal single people with car loans, student loans, and credit cards. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, enter pre-marriage counseling, and then you uh, get you, you go in and go, I don't know, and they turn on the videos, and you're going, well, these people just cut up all their credit. And then the second time you cut up all your credit cards, <laughs> yep. oh, my gosh, wow. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a slam, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. A little bit of a fire hose when you went up to Water Fountain to get a drink? Yep, absolutely. Oh, all right, cool. That's so but, cool. It, but you did it. I mean, you, you stuck with it for 28 months, pure, huh? We mm-hmm. did it, yeah. We were, at the beginning, yeah, I mean, like, this is crazy. What are we doing? The pandemic hit. It kind of helped with, I mean, we couldn't do anything, right? Like, oh, yeah. Our income was kind of affected. I picked up a second job. He was, you know, working side projects to get the, get the thing done. We wanted to come out of the pandemic and be able to travel. You know, we're thankful we're here. We haven't taken a vacation since the pandemic. So oh, wow. Well, welcome to Nashville. First vacation debt free. Thank you. Yeah. So. I'm afraid you and awesome. everybody else is on lower broad down there at the honky tonks. Oh my God! I never saw so many people in my life. This town, this town is exploding. Two days yeah. of that was enough for yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> one day, one minute of that is enough. But yeah, oh my gosh! Wow. Well, congratulations, you guys. Okay, so you're 27 years old. You've been married 22 months. What advice do you have to somebody out there that you, two years ago, three years ago? And they go, I don't know, man, this stuff's weird sounding it, but everybody seems to be excited. So what's the key to getting out of debt? I think the key is just stick to your budget, stay consistent. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough for sure. You're going to have to, you know, decline going to dinner with friends and doing all these things. But now looking back, it's just like the financial freedom is important to us. Like we wanted to go into marriage you know, work hard. And when we start having a family, it was important to us before we have kids, we want to get out of debt. So that's kind of the goal. Wow. Yeah. A lot of young couples that are your age are going, well, Dave, I don't want to miss out on life. I'm in my twenties. This is my prime. You want me to make all these sacrifices, but you guys are saying, Hey, we're going to sacrifice for a short period of time, 28 months yep. so that we can live the next 20, 30, 40 with no payments. Exactly. Totally. That's a huge paradigm shift. Was it worth it? So worth it. Very worth it. All right. You're going to go back in debt? No. Never. Never. <laughs> she got the whole rest of your life yep. with no debt. That's a, that's a long time. That's the goal. 
That's pretty cool because you're in your prime, according to George. What? According. 27. <laughs> well, for you, it's it's 60. Yeah. That's yeah, when you're that's at it. your best. That's it. Yeah, come on. But George. these guys, they're, look, young, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. They're ready to face the world, and they don't have any payments to show for it, and they have a great income. Yeah. 27 years old. Yeah, really. This is pretty cool. And more than anything else, uh, you've learned to work together, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So uh, tell me about the big fight. What was the big fight? I don't know. Each other. <laughs> Who's gonna tell it? Did we have one? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't think we had one. There wasn't one. Huh? Nope. Oh, so you thought I knew something? I didn't know something. They're just, just nicer in Nebraska. They don't fight over there. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> They're Midwesterners. They're not yeah. hillbillies. Yeah, no. I get it. Okay. So day one, you guys just decided, hey, we're on the same page. Let's go do this thing. So you, you really didn't have a big fight. You never nope. argued about it. Not really. I mean, we were really both kind of on the same page. I mean, we took the first class and we were just like sucked in, and we were like, we want to do this. And I mean, we would have little fights like you know my amazon packages and he's like knock it off and you know maybe <laughs> there those we little go. things yeah. but there we go it's front porch litter <laughs> this Jeff is a Bezos. problem yeah this is a problem knock it off oh my god i like that i can yeah. only hide them so many times when i work from home That's the ring catches good. them so well you got the done. delivery guys knock that he delivered it in the backyard <laughs> deliver to the backyard he we won't need see a it. t-shirt yeah. that says knock it off prime <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of living in prime. Yeah, oh, yeah. Go. All right. Wow. Uh, I love it. That's good. I like that. Thank you for being real. You guys are fun. Really proud of you. Who were your biggest Thank cheerleaders? You. Uh, I'd have to say each other. Mm-hmm. And then who? Friends and family were super supportive. Um, neither of our Your fam- moms and dads, were they good with money? And they, so this is like natural for you or <laughs> this is like change? This is change. Yeah, like is, I think yeah. we both kind of just thought like you always live with debt, you know, you always have a car payment or mm-hmm. you always have these things. So, I mean, our family has been super supportive and we've been, you know, helping friends kind of get on board and, you know, we have people reach out to us once we announced that we'd paid off our debt. They're like, what the heck, you know, how did you do that? And so it's kind of fun to just share and yeah. Get people on board. Yeah. Testify, huh? Yep. Yeah. I like it. Very good. Good for you guys. Well done. Well, we're proud of you. I can tell you that. Touchdown. What a great young couple. What a great way to start. Absolute heroes. Yeah. People can take control of their own lives at any age or heroes. Very well done. Thank Very you. Very well done. We got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you because that is the next chapter in your story for sure. You'll be Baby Steps Millionaires before you know it and change your whole legacy. And we're going to give you an extra copy of the Total Money Makeover to give away to one of those friends that is saying, what the heck? Yeah, I want to know what this is. Do this right here. Don't do anything else. Do this right yeah. here. That's it. And Financial Peace University. That's the thing. Very cool. All right. Jared and Gabby, Omaha, Nebraska, 94000 paid off in 28 months, making 110 to 138 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Debt free. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. I love it. Congratulations, you guys. Great work. Great work. All right, you guys want to do that? So here's the deal. Today is the last day of the $30 off special we've been running on a Ramsey Plus membership for a year. Now, why does that matter? Well, Financial Peace University is one of the many things you get in a Ramsey Plus membership. It's like if you want to see Tiger King, you got to sign up for Netflix, right? That's it's you know you got to it's where it's where it is, you yeah. know it's that's the deal. So if you want to go through Financial Peace University, do what they just did, you do it at Ramsey Plus, and that also includes the premium version of our world class budgeting tool, Every Dollar, to help you put that plan into action, take control of your money, and it's thirty dollars off a twelve month membership. Or if you don't really know what you want to do today, that's okay. You can even do a free trial. If you want to do that, you can do that. So text TRIAL to 33789 and learn all about Ramsey Plus, learn all about Financial Peace University, do what they just did. Text TRIAL to 33789. This is The Ramsey Show.
Jersey personality is my co-host today. He is the host of the podcast that had millions of listeners called Borrowed Future. And then we launched a new one that is at even better success. It's going crazy called The Fine Print. And, uh, well, you know the old saying, you need to read The Fine Print. Well, George is helping you where different industries are pretty much putting the screws to you. And uh, we're, you are exposing that. That's the goal. I mean, there are a lot of hidden truths out there keeping people broke, and you get calls about this stuff all the time where people go, Dave, I didn't know. No one told me that I was going to get screwed on this. And so every other week we're covering new topics. We just released one yesterday on buy now, pay later. Remember the old school installment plans? Mm-hmm. Well, now it's all real modern. And right below the add to cart button, there's, they've got this thing that says, hey, what if you paid a fourth of that today yeah. and pay the rest later? And a firm just struck up a partnership with Amazon. No. And so that $1.7 trillion company is about to be a gazillion dollar company thanks to a firm. Because guess what? When you see the payment is actually a quarter of what it would have been in the cart, you go, oh, I can add some more. And but I can add some more. when you add it all up, it's pretty much like rent to own. Yeah. What's, what's the effective interest rate on that crap? Uh, they've all got different ones, different interest, different fees. Uh, a firm's got simple interest, so that's what they're they're real proud of that. They don't have compounding interest, and it can be from 0 to 30%. I'm betting closer to 30. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can get absolutely it's pretty screwed. pretty simple. People if are you can't pay for it. Don't buy it. I won't affirm you using this. Yeah, I'll just yeah. Help so you. we Good we Lord. we talked to uh, Nathan Hamilton from the Ascend, who did a, a survey on this. Eighteen hundred people. Uh, we talked to someone who spent ten thousand dollars on buy now pay later. This girl Peyton, who uh, went into a lot of debt for Lululemon. She's a big Lululemon fan. And of course, we talked to Rachel. Ten thousand dollars worth of Lululemon for clothes. Twenty-two hundred of her th- uh, thirty-two hundred income Lord Jesus. went to debt. Unbelievable. Yeah. So we're talking to people who got screwed. We're talking to experts like Rachel Cruz, who really help us unpack why these services are not in your best interest. These companies are not your friend, and you should not use it. We want you to pay cash. We want you to buy things so you can afford. Ten episodes of the fine print. How many have come out as of today? We've got. Uh, this is the fourth one. Fourth one that came out today. Okay. So season one is ten episodes, all kinds of different subjects, but but all about areas where you are getting uh, messed over and pretty much explains it all to you in detail. Alana is with us in Chicago. Hi, Alana. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I just graduated college in May, and I worked multiple jobs throughout college. So I'm actually in a position where I can pay off all of my student loans but I'm just kind of stuck because the loans are in deferment through January. So I would like to get into investing, but obviously that's borrowed money that's allocated for my loans. But I'm just kind of curious what you think I should do in the meantime between now and January um, while I have this money. So you're saying you have the money in cash to pay off all of your student loans today? Yes. Well, that's a great place to be. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah. And you're saying, should I hold off in order to start investing? Well, I'm wondering if I should put, if I don't know, if it's smart to put a portion of that while I have cash into investing or pay off my debt and then, you know, then consider investing. Yeah. Well, we we teach the baby steps and this is the plan that works. And a lot of people want to do them out of order. And I think you're wanting to make the right decision here with your money. And I know January is going to come Mm -hmm. and you're like, should I just wait and pay it off then? But here's the thing. If you follow the baby steps, we teach that you pay off all of your debt in baby step two using the debt snowball. And is this all your all your debt, just the student loans? Mm -hmm. Okay. so you could be done with baby step two today. Uh, which then you'd move on to baby step three, building your, your fully funded emergency fund, which I like as you head out into your adult life now that you've graduated. And so I want you to pay off that debt as soon as possible. And if you got the cash to do that today, well, you're going to have plenty of time to invest. You just graduated. You're going to be a multimillionaire if you follow these steps. So I'm not as worried about investing as I am about this debt that's hanging over your life right now. And I don't want you to wait on the government. I don't want you to wait on anyone when you can take control and you have the cash in your bank today. Alana, how old are you? 22. Excellent. What's your degree in? Uh, packaging science. Say again? Packaging science. Wow. Packaging science. Did I hear that right? <laughs> Fascinating. <Yeah. laughs> 
Okay, so have you got have you landed a job? Yeah, I started in June, so I've been working for a few months now. Great. What do you make? Uh, seventy. Well done. Amazing. Good job. That's a great job coming out of twenty two. You really got a really good Thank start. You. Okay, here's the trick. Inside of every one of us, it is human nature to want a shortcut. With money, you need to fight that beast that says you can do a shortcut. There is no good mm -hmm. shortcuts with money. It's common sense. It's a slog. It's a grind. And you become wealthy. If you try to do shortcuts, you get setbacks. Shortcuts equal setbacks. And that, that beast that looks for shortcuts, that's the one that's asking the question down inside of you. And that's just normal. You're not doing anything wrong. Okay? It's just normal to ask that question. Is there something, some way mm -hmm. I should try to move these shells and hide the pea? But no matter how many times you move those shells, that stinking student loan is still laying there unless you just write a check and pay it off. You got it? Mm -hmm. So the cleanliness, yeah, the cleanliness of your life, the risk lowered, you make 70000 you don't have a debt in the world, now you can really be a rock star investor. You can really start filling up that 401k, that Roth IRA, start saving for a house, start doing some other stuff because you got no black cloud hanging over your head. So here's the instruction. Listen carefully. Pay the student loan off today before the close of business. When you hang up the phone, pay off the student loan, okay? Absolutely. Can I ask a follow-up question really you quick? You can. Is it wise to then, after that's paid off, to max out my retirement? Uh, I would put it at 15% of your income, and then I would start mm -hmm. saving for a house above that. And make sure you have an emergency okay. fund of three to six months of expenses. You're going to have some money left over after you pay off the student loan? Yeah. Okay. How much? Uh, about five grand. Good. Okay. For, before you start your retirement, let's build that up to a full rainy day fund, three to six months of expenses. Mm -hmm. So probably want that to be about 15 grand. So if you have $15,000 cash okay. that you never touch for anything except big time emergencies and you have no debt, you are in the driver's seat to rock and roll. Then you start putting 15% of your income into retirement, and I'm thinking you're probably a millionaire by 35. Oh. That's if you do this. Okay, that, that's where I think you're headed. So you hold on. I want to help you do it because I want to hear your story when you're 35. I'm still going to be here doing this. So um, I'm going to send you a copy of the book, The Total Money Makeover, and show you exactly what George is talking about, those baby steps things, and exactly how to do them and exactly why to do them. And Because uh, I think you're actually going to do this. It sounds like in your voice she's, you're actually going to do it. Sometimes we give people advice, and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And we can tell they're not going to do it. So, But you, you're actually going to go do this. And then if you follow all the way through, you really are going to be a millionaire. You really are. Because if you're making 70 at 22, you're going to be making 150 at 27. This is where you're headed. Because people that think as clearly as you think, that's what they do. You have done a very good job setting your life up. I'm so proud of you. Hold on. Kelly will pick up, and we're going to give you a copy of the total money makeover. There's hope, George. I'm There's 22-year-olds out there like her. There is hope for our future, America. I love it. I'm just shocked. They're and everywhere. She, and she has the money to we do it. We get to talk to them all the time. They're everywhere. God, if we just had people that smart in Congress. <laughs> I mean, what would we do? Oh, if you just you have, have people don't that, you have to you know, be like 80 and to And they be could in take instruction like she can. Yeah. Because there's nobody in Congress can take instruction. You never got a call from a congressman or woman yet, dude? <laughs> I'd pay good money to hear that call. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Before you Only retire. if they were trying to get me to endorse them, but that was all. Oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> Keep dreaming. She's awesome. What a great young lady. Inspiring. Uh, man, I'm telling you, I get to talk to these 20 somethings all the time like this. It gives me a lot of hope. No wonder you've got a positive outlook. That's it. That's it, man. This is The Ramsey Show. here we just launched a brand new listener survey we want to know what you think about the show you'll be entered to win a 100 dollar amazon gift card no purchase necessary take the survey at ramseysolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789 
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we talk to you about your life and your money. 888-825-5225. Mary is in Sunnyville, Sunnyvale, California. Hi, Mary. How are you? Oh, very good, Mr. Ramsey. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Well, I found your book at the local library in July of this year, and, you know, I read it, including Rachel's book and all that, but now I'm having, like, paralysis by analysis. So I don't have any consumer loan. I don't have car loans, but I have a mortgage loan again, and that's because uh, I paid uh, cash for my house in 2011, but then in 2015, I refinanced it to buy a rental unit. And then in 2018, and I saw another opportunity, so I used my HELOC plus my savings to buy another rental. Last year, I got laid off. And so because of low interest rate, I refi to lower the, and combine my, um, to lower my mortgage and then my HELOC. So I got the 1.99% interest. But I didn't know it then. I didn't know that, you know, I should just pay off the house and all that. But now that I I got laid off, the recruiter of the hospital called me back and offering a sweet deal. So I don't know, to pay off my mortgage, should I just sell some of my investment or should I go back to work and pay it off and then retire? Because I considered retiring this year, I mean last year. I haven't been working since last year. Hmm. How old are you? Uh, 58. I just turned 58. What are you, are you a nurse? Yes, sir. Okay. Is the duty hard? Yeah. If I go back to work, I'm going to work night shift full time, 12 hours each shift. Why? Um, yes. Why? Night shift also. Why work night shift? I know because that's the only offer they have, but the hospital. I'll guarantee you there's other offers for nurses in California. Yeah, but because uh, if I work for the same company, I will retain my seniority of over 25 years. And in nursing, it didn't get you much. It got you the night deal. shift. Yeah. Your seniority I sucks. Long. I'm there. <laughs> well, uh, you, you know, I get, I will get, I will have the first choice of vacations and all that. And then the shift that I will, I mean, not the shift, but like the days I want to work. But this is, see, this is my dilemma. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have a dilemma. You're 58. You have the money not to not work. I'm not working the night shift. That sounds strenuous okay. to me. So tell, well, tell them if they want you, you'll take the day shift with your seniority. There's none. Or if I want to do that, I have to work night shift first for six months. And then no, you once don't. there's an opening. No, you well, don't. That's the it's not a have. law. I know it's the offer to make a counter offer. <laughs> Tell them they're stupid. I'm not coming to work over there unless you work me during the day. Because that's what my own. Um, well, we have the CNA contract. And that's Who gives what a crap? You, know, you work. So what do I do? I mean, I can. I qualify for a pension, but I haven't collected it because once I collect it, then I can only work one day a month or I can start collecting. So when I, you know, when uh, my goal now is to pay off. So what do you make if you, what do you make if you go back? Well, they will give me a sign on bonus of $30,000 and then I'm going to make a hundred dollars an hour. And what does day shift pay? Well, there's no position for day shift. It's oh, only for Jesus. night shift. Back to where we started. Yeah. You're, you just don't mm-hmm. listen. 
Okay, I've told you six times there's a day position over there. You just not you you just accept what they tell you. Don't accept what they tell you. The rule on the Ramsey Show is we break the rules. Okay, mm-hmm. so you you that listen. Do you understand what you're saying? They're willing to pay you a hundred dollars an hour and a thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars signing bonus, but you can't get the day shift. I'm calling yeah, bull crap on that. Uh, six lines of night shifters. <laughs> okay, that you listen. You do whatever you want to do, hon. Okay, that's the deal. That's there's no possible way I'm working night shift. And if you don't understand that you are in a catbird seat negotiating position here, go over there and smack them between the eyes and get the day shift and a hundred dollars an hour and a forty thousand dollars signing bonus. They need nurses. You are in the driver's seat. Okay. Quit acting like all these dadgum rules apply. They don't apply. Or go to work somewhere else and let them pay you 30000 bucks for a day shift. But don't you don't have to go back to the night shift. Make it at 58 years old when you have the opportunity to not work anymore. I think you go back to work, but I think you go back to work in a good, reasonable situation. And by definition, night shift is not that for me if I'm 58. Yeah, I think she needs to advocate for herself and she needs to do some research. Look around to other companies, because I don't care about the seniority if it means your life sucks. Yeah. So, I mean, Darwin, they're putting, like, all these things on the table that says they desperately need you. And I'm trying to explain to you that you have the power to overcome some of what you perceive to be the rules. I don't perceive them to be the rules. And although if you don't go to work at that hospital again, doesn't matter to me. Go to work at a doctor's office. I don't care. But get, you know, if you can get 100 bucks overnight, you can get $75 during the day and a signing bonus, and you probably can get $100 during the day right now. They, you know, we are in California here. This is a desperate situation, and, um, you know, you are, uh, you are the hero signing up here. Oh, my gosh. But, no, I'm not going to work six months overnight because that's what the recruiter said. You're making more than the freaking recruiter, okay? So keep in mind who's in charge here. You all right, Logan is with us in Milwaukee. Hey, Logan, what's up? Hey, um, I am curious on if it's crazy for me to consider getting a, or buying another property when I still have a mortgage on my first house. Yes. I, okay. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you called the, uh, we believe the shortest distance between where you are and wealth is no debt show. Right. And I agree so, with that. It's just yeah. a long name. And so, yeah, name. it's called. It, yeah, the short version is called the Ramsey Show. But the, yeah, the, uh, uh, and so we're always going to say clean up the debt and then use the cash flow from your life and from the cleaned up rental property with no debt on it to buy the next one and the next one and the next one. I admit that that is frustrating to start that way. I can promise you, when you get to where I am, I own close to two hundred million in real estate, all paid for. It leaves you in a different position, then, my friend. Uh, You'll be glad you did it this way when the pandemic hits and a bunch of your tenants can't pay their rent. Yeah. And you don't have any payments. Put you in a whole different world. You can be merciful. You can not go broke. You can do a lot of stuff. This is The Ramsey Show. serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts.
George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. We value the input of our listeners here on The Ramsey Show. It helps us know what's important to you so we can deliver the right content that will help you with the questions and challenges that you have right now. One way you can share your thoughts with us is by answering a few questions in a new survey that we just launched. You can check it out at RamseySolutions.com slash survey. It takes only a few minutes, and there's a $100 Amazon gift card that will be drawn from the people who take the survey. It's up for grabs. Thanks for your time. Text SURVEY to 33789 or visit RamseySolutions.com slash survey. Text SURVEY to 33789. You can take a survey about this show and tell us what's going on. Going on with it. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com, a great American company. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. With free samples, free shipping, and the new promos they run all the time, you save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Diane in Arizona. My husband and I are in baby step two and are working hard to pay off our debt. The one issue we struggle with is not using credit cards. We use them to pay our utilities, groceries, and other monthly bills, but we never carry a balance. By doing this, we're able to travel for vacations for free using our points. What's wrong with doing this if we're not going into more debt? The age-old question, Dave. Mm. The age-old question. We've been exploring this topic on the fine print because it's one of the biggest objections we get uh, here at Ramsey. You're people going, well, Dave, I pay off my card every month. I get some free stuff. What's the harm? Right? So we should clue in Bank of America and Chase what portion of their marketing is working the best. And it is this crap. The vacations. The yeah. points. This is the one. This is the one that's got people believing in stupidity still. After all this time. Yep. And here's what happens. And you can listen to the, the true cost of credit card rewards. This is the second fine print episode that we released. And we dug into this with an ex Capital One insider. Okay. What did they say? Uh, she said they run 10,000 experiments a year on people to figure out what's going to get them to spend more, to use the points. And one of the biggest ways they do it is through the points. Because you know how the points work. Mm -hmm. They don't say it's $500. They say you're going to get 128,000 points that you can use to redeem flights that cost $74,000. And the points change every day. Mm -hmm. And there's blackout dates and there's restrictions. And on top of that, uh, the whole 2% cash back, that one is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Because you know what 2% of $1,000 is? Twenty dollar, twenty bucks to spend a thousand, and uh, that's not a great deal. So let me let me get this straight. If you spend ten thousand dollars, you get two hundred bucks. Ding ding ding. That'll make you rich. Yeah. Spend ten thousand, get two hundred. That's a formula for wealth building right there. Yeah. We did an analogy. Did uh, you people go to grade school? Listen, Diane, here's the thing. We did this analogy in the in the podcast about Chuck E. Cheese. Because this is what it reminded me of, Dave. You go to Chuck E. Cheese, oh my and God, Dad gives is. you a $10 bill, and it's you get the, these it's coins. It's the claw on Toy Story. Yes. Yeah. So you get your coins, and you're so excited to, to spend those coins that you spent $10 on. And you go, and you get all the tickets. And you get 400 tickets. And you go to the, the table at the end of the day, and you go, wow, I can get any prize. And they go, no, you get sticky hands and a pack of gum. And you go, wow, I spent $10 for sticky hands and a pack of gum. That cost a quarter. Yeah. And you go, I got screwed. Yeah, I think. So uh, here's the thing. I don't have big buildings, Dave. Uh, the credit card companies do. They're sponsoring every stadium in America, and they're doing it with billions of dollars that they're making off of the backs of the these people, people who are overspending. Like you. Yes. Yeah. So, so. here's the thing. Um, to start with, you're, you're not going on vacation for free. That is an absolute asinine, stupid statement. It is not true. You might have got your airline ticket for free, but everything else on the vacation was not free. So you're spending money and you're going on vacation when you should have been working because you're in debt. You're not supposed to be going on vacation when you're in debt. We follow everything you say. No, you don't. You don't go on vacation when you're in debt, and you don't go out to eat when you're in debt. You, you work, and you work, and you work, and you clean your dadgum debt up. And that is that. That's the Ramsey plan. Now you can say you can you can go do your plan if you want, but don't say you're doing my plan when you're going on vacation, because it's just not true. And, and here's the thing: the arrogance that is required, the intellectual arrogance that is required for you to think that you are taking on 
billion dollar companies who have algorithms that know what bottled water you drink and you are somehow beating them and you're 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 fleecing them you're getting an airline ticket and it doesn't cost you anything you really are pretty arrogant to think that you're actually winning at this game i mean honestly you understand that when when Citibank, when you call them, your zip code is pulled off your NSX code, and the person answering the call, if it's a friendly call, is a person of the same accent as you. If you call from the south, you'll get a syrupy Southern Bell accent. And if you call from the wicked northeast, you'll get a wicked northeastern accent. You're going to, these people screw with you on levels you have no idea and you think you're beating them. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. So here's the thing. We did study, we did a study of millionaires. We studied 10,000 of them, 10,167. Not a single one told us we became millionaires with our free vacation points because we ran all our utilities, our groceries, and everything else through a credit card, and then we went on vacation for free, and it didn't cost us anything, and that's how we built our wealth. Not one said that. Isn't that odd, Diane? So here's the thing. People that ask this question are people that think they're beating the system. Let me tell you how you beat the system. You don't play. Don't play in the system. Yep. You know what it's like? It's like being a mouse in the maze, and you get to the cheese, and you think, I won. I got the cheese. And you zoom out, and you go, no, I'm just a part of a giant social experiment that exists to take my money. Ooh. That's what it is. Ooh. So you can play that game, and that's fine. You can get your vacations. But I'm not in the, in the business of trying to gain points. I'm trying to gain wealth. I want to complete the baby steps. I want to pay off my house. I want to give outrageously. And that doesn't happen by paying off my card every month and reaping the benefits of 2% cash back. You know the Chuck E. Cheese thing's funny as crap. Oh, it's great. That did, is a the great team did a great job with the edits. We got the coin like, sound brrr, and everything. Brrr, you got to go listen. come out of there, ski ball or whatever. They're just coming out of there like crazy. You've got this long line of tickets, and your little kid, they think they're getting the big prize, and you get you nothing. You never get the big you prize. Get nothing. It's, you got You spent 10 to 20 bucks to get a prize that costs less than 50 cents. And the same thing's happening when you go to book these flights and you go, well, we can go to Boise. Yeah, I don't think uh, Martinique was on the list, was it? <laughs> no, you're not going to the Bahamas first class. I don't think. I'm sorry. No, you, so Belize and Bermuda are not on the list. No. No. So. San Diego's not on the list. Nashville's not on the list. No. It's blackout. Blackout dates. What's blackout mean? They don't go? Don't get Oh, go. no, they just won't take you. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> I, I think you can do a lot better by using a debit card and using cash and saving up for your own dang vacations. Yeah. You, you know where I go on vacation? Anywhere you want. There you go. That's how that works. And, you, you know, when I use those credit cards, that, that always works. So That's how it happens. I haven't had a credit card in, my gosh, it's, George, it's coming up on 30 years. Wow. We should have a party. We should. We can't use points to pay for the party, though. In That's Belize. <laughs> in Belize. <laughs> I'm in. How about Cabo? Let's go to Cabo. I'm in. Uh, We're heading there. Man, I'm telling you. I love it. Great question, Diane, <sighs> uh, but a hard, a hard answer. Yeah. Well, because it's passive aggressive, so you need a wrong answer. I mean, hard yeah. answer. What's wrong with doing this? Because we're not going into any more debt. Yes, you are. You're going into debt because you're not paying off the debt that you have because you're spending money that you don't have to do crap you shouldn't do. There's a just there it is. It's a simple thing. But it's your life, darling. You get to do what you want to do. The problem is you ask our opinion, and we are an expert on our opinion. And we've led more people out of debt and into wealth than any other brand in America today. But you do what you want to do, kiddo. This, you be you. This is the Ramsey Show.
George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Augustine is with us. He's in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Hi, Augustine. How are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I'm 21, and I bought a house this January before I turned 21 because I really wanted to. Like That was my goal in high school. And uh, so I did it. But now work has been really up and down. And so every once in a while, like I'll have a trouble p- making the payments. So I want to make extra cash rather than just working. But the house has made about $100,000 in equity in the last seven months. So my question is, should I sell it? and have more to put down on a regular down payment, like a bigger down payment on a different house or like use it as an Airbnb style or something else like that. What do you do for a living? Uh, I work on elevators. Mm -hmm. What's your extra job? Um, I, my second, I was working at a, um, at a marina for a second job when it was slow. Now work's been, work's picking back up. So I'm, I'm making, I make 38 an hour right now at the elevator job, which is like, it's a good job, but it's just kind of sketchy. So I was just curious. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by sketchy as far as the volatile, it's volatile? Yeah, it's volatile. It's Uh it's considered construction work. It goes up and down with the amount of work that we're able to pull in. So when work is good, like when we have a lot of um, big jobs or whatnot, work is great. I can't complain, and payments are super easy, and I have no struggles. But when it's slow, like when like we finish a big job and it's like slow for a month or so, and it's like okay, well now what now should I? I really it comes I think it comes down to a budgeting question, but I, I think it comes down to a career very... question because yeah. you're never going to be able to establish a life with a income that is not that is not steady enough that you can you know make enough money during the year to eat, right? True. Because here's the thing: yeah. if it, it doesn't matter if, if you have some down, if you have some months that the income disappears, uh, as long as you have enough months that it doesn't, and the overall year average for the year is still an excellent income. I mean, if you make five hundred thousand dollars a year, you don't. But if you make five hundred thousand dollars a year and you have two months with no income, it's not a big deal, right? Right. So the point is, you're not making any money. It's not just the volatility, it's the overall income is not enough to support you. They're not working you enough to where at the end of the year when you add it up, you had a good job. That's what I'm saying. So I think you got a career problem, I don't think you got a house problem. And you may need to sell your house to step into your next career, or you may need to look for a different place to uh, apply your trade. Um, because, you you know, 38 bucks an hour is pretty sweet income. Uh, but not if you're not getting it. Right. So, I mean, if you're 31, you don't need to be making the same phone call with the same income problem. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. So you got to solve the career problem, and then that'll tell you what to do with the house. No, you don't do Airbnb. You either get this career thing solved and keep the house, or you sell the house, put the money in the bank until you get the career thing solved. One of those two things. But the last thing, you need some other goob living in your house, and you know, you're trying to pay payments, and maybe they don't show up because of COVID. And, you know, maybe Idaho decides to lose its dadgum mind like some of these other places. And now you're just shut down. And you don't need all this risk, man. You're 21. You got 100,000 bucks on the table. Take your money and run. Sit sit over there in an apartment and get yourself solved, or get yourself solved and keep the house. One of the two is what I would do. Yeah, we need some stability here and a financial foundation. I don't know if you have any debt, but if you do sell the house, I want you to make sure you're following the baby steps. You clean up the debt. You have an emergency fund. That way, when you get into a house again, you're not going to be having this problem where you're having anxiety about being able to afford the payment in case something goes bad, in case you you can't find some work. But I do think you need to find a career that's stable with a steady paycheck right now at your age. Yeah, it is a bit. um, I had trouble not laughing. 
His, his income goes up and down in the elevator business. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. I missed that. That was just, way over I'm, my head. I'm just, I just, yeah, that was, stri- yeah. That's, no, no that's kidding. clever. Yeah, that's, well, it's, it is what happened. I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> that's the business. It goes up and Bada down. Bada-bum. That's a Papa Dave joke right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is in Washington, D.C. Hey, Eric, what's up? Hey, Dave, I'm still laughing from that last call. <laughs> he enjoyed it, too. Uh, okay, we're good. Oh, good. We got we're another good. one. All right, good. <laughs> How can we help? I am, uh, so I'm calling because I want your uh, career advice. I'm sort of at an impasse right now. I currently work a salaried position, and I was offered recently a 100% commission job. Okay. What do you make at the salary? I make 80000 What do you do? I am a real estate valuation consultant at a large firm. So you're doing in, you're doing internal appraisals for their purchases. Uh, so I work with internal and external clients, and it's valuation work for different commercial real estate assets. But some of it is appraisals. Okay. All right. So some of it's for depreciation schedules and so forth. Yep, that's correct. Gotcha. Okay. We use some of those firms here. Okay. Cool. Uh, Eighty grand. How old are you? I'm twenty nine. And your straight commission gig is what? This would be in the real estate industry as well. It would be for financial brokerage for commercial real estate. Financial brokerage. Right. So I would connect borrowers and lenders for uh, these large commercial assets. Okay. All right. And that's what the income would come from is those those success fees. Yeah. So a commercial originator in, of, of sorts. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. You probably have pretty good knowledge of that business. What what what? What is uh, what do you think your income would be? Have you talked to other people doing it that are have you know? Have you got some kind of trend I, line on this thing? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've interviewed people in the industry, and it's really just a success or failure sort of thing. It's like the Matthew effect: <laughs> you either you get it all, or you don't get anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's pretty risky, in my opinion, and that's sort of why I'm, why I'm calling up. I don't have any debt. I have you know some savings in the bank, but I don't want to just give that away for this risk. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's all dependent on the individual. Mm-hmm. Well, and the market can shift on you and, and mess you up too. So, right. um, you know, yeah. I mean, what would you think, you know, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how to project this. Is this a $200,000 thing? Is this a hundred thousand dollar thing? What are you thinking? You know, there have been guys that they make two deals a year and they make a quarter of a million dollars, but then others struggle to, you know, live off of 10 deals. Yeah, I'm lucky that I can live off of, you know, 50 grand or obviously way more than that in my, you know, I'm not, I don't have any kids and mm-hmm. relatively young. Um, but coming in new, I don't have any connections, which is what the name of the game is. And that's where you're going to make the big bucks. So starting out, I would probably struggle. What, what's an, what's an interim? Is there an interim step, a middle step, where you don't have to jump all the way in the deep end of the pool? No. I, well, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's why it's, it's a difficult decision for me. <laughs> there's no, there's no salary, you know. Base. No, I'm not talking about salary. I'm talking about, is there an apprenticeship or is there, could you go sell commercial uh, real estate for a while uh, and build the connections? So I would current I would work under two directors, and so I would get their mentorship. So I would oh. not be there, you know, just you know by myself in the deep end. I would have connections guiding me, and they might throw you some of the crumbs off their table. Exactly. Okay. I guess I'd add up the crumbs and see what they look like, and can I make it on that for a year or two and give this a good hard try? It sounds like a wonderful adventure. The The upside right. is that there's a tremendous income potential. The downside is is the slice of the market that you're operating in is really thin. The mm-hmm. number of human beings and the number of actual deals that will need you is a small number compared to, say, things where there are large numbers like residential real estate and you do bazillion houses right right? this is a small number of humans ever do a transaction or even witness a transaction like you're doing um but when you hit one i mean you're whale hunting you're elephant hunting you're not rabbit hunting you know when you go elephant hunting there's just a few of them but they're really big and rabbits they're everywhere you know and so that that's kind of what you're looking at i don't know what to tell you it sounds kind of interesting except it just bothers me that the slice is so thin yeah He's wow. young. If he has the risk tolerance, it's an adventure. He Just does. have a big old savings account. He does have the risk tolerance. You can hear it in his voice. This is The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Maya Angelou said, if you must look back, do so forgivingly. If you must look forward, do so prayerfully. However, the wisest thing you can do is be present in the present, gratefully. Go Maya. Some classics. All right. Kelsey is with us in Baltimore, Maryland. Kelsey, how can George Camel and I help? Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be talking to you. You too. Um, so I have a question about whole life insurance. Um, my parents got a policy for me when I was in the crib and um, passed this policy on to me a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we used we took a loan out from it um, to put down on the house and you know, just kind of knowing we never had to pay it back um, and just knowing that I didn't really care about this policy. It's very small. We have other life insurance that's not whole. Um, I'm not sure what to do on, you know, to keep it active. I pay about $800, $900 a year. Cancel um, it. And really? Cancel it. What about the tax implications? There aren't any. Should I worry about that at all? There aren't any. Oh. Here's why. Okay. Your tax basis in a whole life policy is the total of the premiums paid in. There is no possible way that you took out of this policy more than your parents has paid in. Yeah. They're just, they're just horrible. It's, it's a black hole for money, especially kid whole life policies. Your parents meant well, they were really sweet. And the net result was they were able to help you with the down payment on a house. Had they actually invested yeah. in a mutual fund with the same amount of money they put in this policy, they could have just bought you a house. But that's a side issue. That's over. Yeah. That's water under the bridge now. So that's how bad these things are mathematically. Yeah. So, But anyway, yeah, you don't keep it around. No, it's not a pet. And we can honor their intent and their heart without, uh, you know, continuing to throw money off the bridge every day, every month, every year. Right. So, yeah, I would just okay. can't. So you, if you no don't need the life insurance, I just cancel it. Nope. Um, if the basis does come in and they will send it to you because they'll threaten you with this, it's their way of getting you to not cancel it. Apparently, that's already happened. That's where you got this information. You know, the mm-hmm. agent says, oh, no, you're going to get taxed. And you're like, yeah, it's four dollars, you know, but uh, yeah. um, instead of eight hundred this year. So I, I can I, I I'm going to give you a ninety five percent probability that there's no taxes on it at all. On the 5% chance that there is, their t- your taxes will be less than your premium this year. Okay. So, I okay. mean, at the end of the day, when you get cut, get it all done, it's not going to – you're because, you're, again, your basis is the total of the premiums paid in. And only if you receive more than that, including the loaned amount, okay, because the loan is – is paid off as a part of the uh, the cancellation. And if there's anything above the loan that comes to you, those two things, if that is larger than the total of the premiums, only then will there be taxes. And it almost never is because these things really suck so bad. Right. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you for the call. Appreciate Easy. you joining us. You know, so that is like a product from the 1940s and 1950s. It's like a, uh, it's like an alligator. It's a dinosaur that has survived into the modern era. How do they do that? Slick you know, marketing. It's a dinosaur because when you sell it, people buy it. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, if you sell it enough, aggressively enough, people buy it. Um, I mean, Gerber, the baby food company, still sells whole life policies wow. to people when they get a baby, so that they can go to college. Well, let me tell you where you're going to college. Nowhere. <laughs> Not with that. You're money. not getting in anywhere with that policy. Yeah. Okay. Because you're going to make fourteen dollars when it's all over. You're getting screwed. No. Listen. If you buy your financial products from a baby food company, it might be an you're issue. You're doing it wrong. Okay. If your baby food says American Funds on the outside of it, you might have the wrong baby food. Come on. Don't eat it. Stay in your lane, people. Stay in well, your lane. And you talk about why this is a bad product. It's trying to do two things at once. It's trying to be insurance and an investment. And you're saying, hey, there's way better ways to invest. it's always only one, and you're always paying for both. Yep. That's the problem. So we recommend uh, term life insurance, exactly. level term life, 15 to 20-year policy to where you're self-insured when that policy runs out. And, and that's it's for a adults. fraction of the price. That's for adults. Yeah. And, and if for you the want kids. to save money for your kids, 
Save money for your kids. But there's no need in for a, mutual fund. a life insurance policy. No, you don't need a life year-old. insurance policy on a kid. Because if they pass away, you didn't lose their income. Now, if they get a $2 million uh, ad campaign contract with Huggies because they have a cute butt, that's great. Then sign up a life insurance yes, policy because now you have enough. an income there for this cute butt. Yeah. And you've got to take care. You know, you got to protect that. But that's 99% of the children do not make an income that's yeah. worth insuring. Okay, so, you know, this is just and and so it's being used as a savings vehicle for college. And that's a freaking joke. So what happened was her parents paid into it their whole her whole life, 20 years, and she got five or 10 grand out of it. It's the sunk cost fallacy. I got to keep this thing alive because we've been keeping it alive forever. Yeah, it's the sacred cow. We've always done it this way. And this is why we will always continue to do it this way. We have no other reasoning. That's it. It's a bad it's, reason. It's a sacred cow rule. Yeah. Brian's with us. Brian is in Columbus, Georgia. Hi, Brian. How are you? Doing well, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So my wife and I are both active duty Army. We've been in the Army for about eight years. Uh, we both plan on serving and retiring after 20 years. Uh, my question is about the best way to save and be to be financially independent at 42. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll still do something. But, you know, after working as hard as we have over the last eight years or so, we like to be able to, you know, volunteer, take care of the family, uh, do whatever. So without being able to have access to traditional uh, retirement uh, savings venues, curious if you had any thoughts on that. Well, you have Roth IRAs available to you and you have the TSP available to you. So we're, we're currently saving in, in both of those, uh, but I just didn't want to incur. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I see guess. what you're saying. You need some bridge money. You need some other money outside of that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So thank you for your service, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. So you got 12 years to roll and get ready. Yep. Uh, how much is in your TSP and Roths now? So right now we have about 150 between our Roth IRAs and Roth TSPs. Okay. You'll be at about um, 600 with that plus whatever you put in. All yeah, right. and so we we make about 150 after tax right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have about 120 in non-retirement investment accounts. Mm-hmm. Um, some some of that we have set aside to you know buy buy new buy a new car in, in like two years mm-hmm. um, when when mine will give out. Yeah, you're um, still but, you're still going to have a million to a million and a half at your current rate uh, plus whatever you put in. So you're you're in really good shape. Um, if you're invested in, in, you know, market rates of return in good mutual funds, that's where you'll roll on that. So, um, yeah, I think you, I think you got to look at some low turnover mutual funds, they're called. Get with one of our smart investor pros and just set up a, a whole side thing that says, okay, I need this amount of money. And let's say you, you build 600K in there and uh, or 500K in there and you want to pull 10% off of it. That's going to give you 50K plus your two double military retirement. You ought to be fine. Okay. And on top of that, you're going to have another million dollars, but that's all trapped until 59 and a half. And on top of that, you're only freaking 42 and you probably do need to go do something and make some money. Just um, for, just for fun. How would you, uh, how would you, oh, absolutely. How would you allocate, I guess if we're saying saving 15% um, a year, would you shift the um, I think you have a more aggressive money. plan than a 15% plan. Number one, I want you to get the house paid for. But aside from that, you may want to put, as soon as you get the house paid for, you can go more than 15%. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go pretty heavy over into that bridge because you're going to have, I mean, you're rocking it. You're doing a great job. I'm going to head over into that bridge. A low turnover mutual fund is a mutual fund that doesn't have but about 5% or less of the taxes are, are due on the gains because they're not selling the stocks inside the mutual fund. So that's what you're looking for, low turnover ratio mutual fund. So it'll keep the taxes off of you until you actually use the money, like a capital gains rate. It's a, it's a really good strategy for what you're trying to do. George Campbell, good job. Thank you. Ben good and fun. Kelly, we'll be back before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Dave here. We just launched a brand new listener survey. We want to know what you think about the show. You'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. No purchase necessary. Take the survey at RamseySolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789.